ready when you are. Land I'm ready. The... I've been ready for like. We're off. Not recording. Land of... Okay. Ah. Uh, Three. Epic oh, Conan. I'm on camera, ma. <laughs> Three, <laughs> two. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. It's like a tea bag. Ah, oh, no. I know. Welcome to the show. Liquid Death got tea. And it doesn't suck. And I just found that right now. Liquid Death tea. Rest in peach. Ah, ah. <laughs> see what they did there? Because liquid death and then rest in peach because it's peach flavored tea, you idiot. That one seems a little taller than mine. Is that a taller, tall yeah, boy? Yeah, because these are the new ones. See, they're first they had the water, the white one, that's water. Then they have the black with the bubbles. You're giving me gen, they, gen pop water? I don't get no tea, bro. Do you want a tea? <laughs> yeah, that sounds nice. Katie, can you get him a tea? <laughs> you could kill me. Wait, with absolute tea. Absolute tea. tea Lee. Oh, God. <laughs> tea Lee. Is it me? Is that optical illusion? That is taller. I knew it. Yeah, because this is tea. It's, I can't wait. It's a, it's a tall drinker of tea. Tea, as the saying goes. I'm a cup of tea. You're not a tall cup of tea. Yeah, that's right. Craig Conan, <laughs> welcome to the show. Can I say, if you were... if Give you to him. <laughs> Here, which one do you want? I have multiple teas. Help yourself. Oh. Have all the teas. Oh, tea pee. Tea the living crap out of yourself, Craig. Grim leafer. They're actually really good. I'm really happy with my... Um, what are the flavors? This My is membership. aimless Palmer and Grim Leafer. Is it peach or strawberry? I don't know what Grim means. It can't be peach because rest in peach is this one. Yeah. Armless Palmer <laughs> is going to be oh, your classic okay. iced All right, tea, I get it. lemonade. I get back? it. Play on. Well. I'm back. There you go. I was discombobulated. I was laying down yes. outside. Well, hey, let's get to that because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm new friends with Craig. Obviously, he's a comedian, <laughs> podcaster, and, and to me... In my small journey of comedy, is probably the most. I don't. I just, might, might be a little bit insulting, but the the by far the greatest comedian I've never heard of because I don't know anybody. I'm not in the scene, so I just show up at hahas, and this guy goes up, and I'm like, oh, I right, was it. I don't. I remember the day because I I drove home kind of sad because I was like, oh, that's that's what it's like because I was kind of wondering. I, what shouldn't take me very long to be successful in this game? Nobody's that great. And then you showed up, and I was like, "Wait, is he? A, does he have a helicopter or a private jet?" And someone was like, "Nah." And I'm like, "But he's one of the funniest people I've ever seen." Quick, like you've got a real gift, dude, like a real one. Thank and that's you know coming from an amateur, but still, I think I know what I I, I know that the good guys are worthy of their goodness. And I you learned are to one receive compliments recently instead of, you know what I mean? So that I just say thank you rather than dismiss them. Right. It's, yeah, good. Just because I have to, love, people baby. that are going to check him out, It's that's what that's my opinion of it. But uh, I don't know him that well. We've done a couple of shows together and I know he's coming on the show. I'm excited to have him on the show. And I, uh, my wife says somebody is on the front lawn and the front lawn is a gate. Like you have to get, have to go in the gate to come in. <laughs> And there's a guy in the starfish position <laughs> on the front lawn. And I'm like, I'm a hippie dog. Who is that? I just needed to lay down no on your soil. You. Just let me get them blades of grass real quick. What were you doing? That's the secret to how I'm funny. I just lay on the soil. Really? I don't even write. God gives it to me. So I'm going to start doing <laughs> that. Just got to rub your nub in the, in the minerals. Do you, do you lie in the grass a lot? I try to. I did that for many different reasons. First of all, I'm a hippie, but now there's science documenting behind it. And there's, 
I'm going to ruin this, by the way. Look at me. My explanation is not going to be on point. But this old dude put like electrical tape on his bed and uh, ran a wire from the earth to his bed because he heard that grounding. The earth gives off a pulse. Yep. Electromagnetic pulse. Yeah. We're electromagnetic beings. Okay. So the homie was laying on the soil and it was helping him with his inflammation and weak knees or whatever. Yeah. So he's a little engineer and he made a little rig. So he slept on a bed that was connected to the pulse of the earth. And then all of a sudden, all of his ailments started going away. And then he ran a study, ghetto bootleg style, that mainstream science will dismiss. And then so he did this study and then like 60 for 60 of the old dudes, all their ailments went down. Now, whether you believe that or not, the uh, earth just will give you energy, you know, whether you study it or not. So I was tired because I got these two new kittens. One's wounded. My nephew injured one. It's a long story. We'll get into that later. Anyways, I have four cats. I had two. My sister had kittens. Her children injured them. So I haven't, you know, I'm waking up by kittens. I'm tired. I drank coffee. It wasn't working. So I was like, I'm going to lay on your soil real quick. Get some energy. Did it work? No. Uh, no. But Arnold Palmless over yeah, here. Yeah. Whatever the Armless Palmless. Armless Palmless yeah. is going to help. Armless <laughs> Palmless. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should talk to them about changing the name. I, so I that's am catchy. A, I know that's weird stuff. But do, like, you know, just go lay on the soil, see how you feel afterwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, somebody saying that they always did that. They took their shoes off and they walked in the park before a skateboard contest. I can't remember who it was, but that was the first person I ever heard say that. And I remember thinking, because he sucked, so I didn't want to copy it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. I was like, oh, you suck. If it was somebody good. If it was someone good, cool, I totally would have done doing, it. Yeah. Did that person have or ever develop like a substance abuse issue? I don't think so. He was super strict. Okay, okay. Because it's either going to be, yeah, that guy got he arrested was... for d- dealing meth two years later or <laughs> that was the straight How do you guy. know I got busted for meth, bro? <laughs> did, did you? Did, right? <laughs> oh, you didn't? Just you were lost. a junkie though, right? Yeah, big time. Um, no, I got raided, uh, but it wasn't for me as crazy as that sounds. You were living with someone else It was got the raided? front house. I was the back house. Oh, were man. you dealing too though? Mm-hmm. So they busted but just both weed, of you? But not, they were trying to get him to go away for life. Okay. And they weren't trying to take in firecracker weed men. Right. Right. You know? Well, that's good to know. You're like the Cato Kalen of weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, like, they're after OJ. And I'm like, hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> just tell me what you need I'm me to say. I'm just smoking weed, bro. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah. Be smart. Don't start. Kick the habit. Put it out before it puts you out. All phrases we've heard a hundred times, yet we still continue to have bad habits. Bad habits can be hard to kick. Our sponsor, Fume, is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electric device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. Man, I really want them. I didn't expect much out of Fume, but the minty sensation is really powerful and really hits the back of your throat. You're always toking that thing, Michael. I love minty things hitting the back of my throat. Everybody who knows me knows that. (laughs) The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed perfectly to do just that. It's Fume's goal to make switching easy and even enjoyable. They have thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who have successfully switched when other solutions just didn't work. Head to tryfume.com and use code Jason to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. The Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version to Fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfume.com and use code Jason to save an additional 10% on your order today. Thanks, Fume. So what did they say? This is a story I've told on stage, but it's the craziest story of my life. The guy raiding me, yeah. I went to high school with, and I played Little League with, and he has a gun pointed at me. And I'm just like, you know, like, Chris? Cause, do you have a mask on? No. No, this is 10 years. There's no mask. What do you mean? 
No, did he have, like, was he disguised? Oh, no, his no, face? no, 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 no. It it's was not, him. There's no cartel. Face to face. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're like, I know, I'm your I, friend. No, I know. And he was just like, Craig? He's a police officer. He's a police officer. Now. Oh, okay. Sorry, we went down different paths. He yeah. became a cop. And I was a little druggy kid living in a back house behind two striker, a gangster in Culver City by the projects. Got it. People think Culver City is a nice area, but there's this little area where it's a little hairy. There's but, actually a trailer park in Culver City. Yeah, there's a trailer yeah. park and, and uh, projects. Anyways, I lived behind a gangster and they were raiding him and I got raided by default. And the guy at my door to my little back house garage makeshift apartment was the guy I knew since I was 12 years old. And then what did he say? I, I just said, like, help me. And he's like, I will. And then he handcuffed me. That's the bit. But he did put him on loose because I was cuffed up three times prior. Yeah. And, and you know, and they crank him on and cause a little nerve damage. And um, he kept saying, like, they weren't there for me. And I was, I was like, I got weed and I got fire. He's like, stop telling me this, you know. And it's, and it, and yeah, that's, they let me go because they weren't there for me. Yeah, they don't raid houses for a couple of M80s and a... Uh, and- no, but I was so scared. And that's the whole bit. I feel weird telling it, but it's a true story that really happened. And it, just, it was just the wildest of my life. Like, I was like, we played catch for a decade, bro, you know? <laughs> do, you, uh, were, do you think that he was surprised that you would have turned out that way? No. I mean, he was surprised to see me, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, you know, I did drugs and right because we all went to school, school with some kids. We're like, yeah, yeah, who, yeah most likely, a, most likely to get raided. Yeah, I wasn't on that list, yeah. but maybe not. No, I was. Yeah. I was like the friendly. I like mischief. Right. I like firecrackers and drugs, but not evil. You know, violence and all that. Why firecrackers? Ah, uh, my daddy just kind of gave them to me as when I was five, and, and you've I, always been into them since. I went with it. Yeah. Are you still into them? Yeah, I got a stash, yeah. And it's, does it, in California, there's like some lawyer you can't have them or something still? Which also makes you want to have them, yeah. Right. It does. Mm-hmm. Can you I like being a I, bit of a bandit? Yeah. For you. Can I interject? I know my people. Yeah. Can I interject and, and stereotype a little bit? You are half Mexican? Yeah. People don't realize what a strong Mexican firecracker culture we have if you don't live here. It it really is. It's a thing. Like yeah. Dodgers uh, win, firecrackers. Fourth, Lakers of, Fourth win. of July in my neighborhood is a month long. Holiday. Probably three, yeah. if we're being real honest. <laughs> okay. The month before and the month after. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. New Year's, birthdays, quinceaneras. Sounds fun. It is fun. I like, I wish my friends yeah. would let off firecrackers at parties. I'll give you some. Really? Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be stoked to just be like, <laughs> bah, 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 just, freaking out. I'd be like, hey, man, I got firecrackers. This is a little grand finale, yeah, a little mortar yeah. box set. Who's, I it, got a who, flame, who's it hurting? I the got a flamethrower. Uh, For, true. Forest fires. Hey. <laughs> I We're got a flamethrower. Now that's crazy. You can bring some fireworks over here and I'll shoot the flamethrower at the fireworks. We'll have a party, son. Isn't it crazy that the flamethrower is legal and my firecrackers are illegal? Yes, that's ridiculous. This is the, I agree. Yeah. This no, is I know. My one is apparently uh, made in a way where it's legal, but then it's kind of like e-bikes where if you look, there's a cop could bust you for it if he wanted to. Yeah. Because it's just like this weird... Uh, oh, in Nevada, it's different in here, and this one doesn't have a gas. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I feel like if they wanted to, they wreck you regardless. A flamethrower, that's so wild. I love it, though. I was very fortunate. Some A friend of mine that makes uh, custom weapons, Dark Alliance firearms, said, hey, man, would you want a flamethrower? And I'm like, what are you... Yes. Yeah. Of course I want a flame. Ship bro. it. You don't need How? to ask me. Where that. do I get it? And he's like, I'll send it. And it's all custom. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's, like imp- it's like improv. Yes. And how many free refills <laughs> do I get? <laughs> <laughs> Give me more. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. Wow. Now that I have a backyard, because uh, the last house I had a, I tried to use it in the, <laughs> and it was a really small backyard and it was surrounded in dried out bamboo. See, now that's bad. Yeah. Now that's I, bad. I tried to. When it worked, I accidentally set fire. I bet. Just is, a little bit of it. Is that the house next door with the burned down garage? No, that's not mine. I didn't do that. That's them. I didn't do that. I had nothing to do with it. I did it. I'm not a bad neighbor. Yeah. I'm not re- I'm for the record. I'm about to be, though. I know we're in Southern California. I didn't start any forest fires. I live in the city. Yeah. It's all cement. It was no you, problem. you Todd. <laughs> ah, no, I ain't one of them. So you got a lot of cats. You like cats. Do you like dogs? I love dogs. I don't know if you saw, you probably didn't, but I interviewed The Undertaker the other day. And The Undertaker 
said he likes dogs and he would pat a puppy, but he would not pat a kitten. He's the Undertaker. What are you afraid of? You're seven foot nine. I should have said that. He's got a reputation to uphold. It, yeah, he C- told me that he liked... Cats are around the grave. He told He's me the he Undertaker. liked floral. Oh. He said... He, yeah, but that's a funeral thing. What? A funeral? Yeah, fl- no, that you never get as many flowers as you do when you die. Yeah, but it's still pretty no, good. He floral <laughs> shirts when he goes on vacation. Oh, like floral clothes. I thought I'm you meant like floral there, arrangements. Man. No, no, he likes floral <laughs> shirts. He said he likes big, colorful floral shirts to wear when he goes on vacation with his wife. So he was... Like a triple XL weird Al? He was admitting that he does get down with fruity stuff, huh. but he was definitely... I don't think he was faking it. He, yeah. dated, he had People a personal People are afraid beef. of cats. What is that? I don't know. I They're love like them. my greatest friends. They're so awesome. I, I, I'm so down with everything that cats think. I started off with one, and then my lady, my ex lady, she brought another one in, and then my niece and nephew are like uh, Elmira. Hug them and squeeze them and get until oh. you know. Yeah, but, and they broke one of them's legs, oh, and now I got four. Dude, there were ki- two kittens, the two kids with two kittens. You child, you got a nephew that uh, of mice and men to cat. Yep. So, and now I got I'm nursing a little child. kitten back. I'm like, oh man, I. I didn't sign up for four, but here we are. But it's fun, though. It's, they're so cute. I was going to say, <laughs> we've had a really rough time with one of ours. He's got a heart condition, and he keeps going to a hospital and having seizures and oh, I'm sorry, all man. these medicines and money, and, and Can, I don't know how much longer he's going to live. It's, it's heartbreaking, but he's good right now, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. We'll give him a little mushrooms and CBD and yeah. lay him on the soil. I wonder. I mean, if he licks me enough, he'll get some mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> They're really good for the brain. They huh? are. They make me, like, as I'm going through a tough time, it makes it kind of gets me in a positive mindset. When I go dark, I have to eat some. Yeah, me too. But have you eaten them every day and then you end up crying in the closet? Not, Not, yeah. And, but you know what I mean? That you sounds just... like I've gone too far. <laughs> now, <laughs> as a sober guy, you eat mushrooms every day? No, I mean... Yes and no. Uh, my buddy said that line. I I jacked it from him because he said, you can't microdose every day. And he's like, I ended up crying in my closet. <laughs> and I did some research. And he's like, it's every other day. Every uh, other. Because you got to. Yeah. Um, so I haven't tripped balls in nine and a half years. I'm nine and a half years off narcotics and alcohol, even though I don't think mushrooms is counts. Yeah, yeah. But I, of course, I'm a little fiend here, and I'll be like, oh, this makes me happy. So then I did it every day, and then I'm crying at an airport. Now, that's a true story. And I'm just so like, why? Why? And then my buddy told me that, and then you Google, and you're like, oh, every other day. So yes and no. Mm-hmm. I was eating them every day because it made me happy, and then I want to repeat as the fiend does. And then you just like, why am I crying over all things? But in a different way, instead of sad, like too pretty. Like, oh, that tree's too pretty. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's... And the, as opposed to, like, I hate myself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the, it, at least it's... But um, no, I do not eat them every day anymore, and that's actually <laughs> another battle. Do not eat them every day. Yeah, because they do make you happy. Yeah. But then anything in excess is like... Ugh. I don't know, man. If you don't do... Look, I feel like if you cry because you saw something pretty then it's time to lay off for a couple of days. Exactly. And then you do it again a couple of days later and you're fine. Yeah, and the research I Googled, it's every other day or three days on, three days off. Yeah. You're not, it, it stirs up too much, whatever it does. Oh, uh, no. Whoops. I actually thought the classic microdose <laughs> was one on, two off. That was how it was. When I did it, that's the way I did it because that's what I was told is how you're supposed to do it. I don't know. I'll just be honest. I'm not even microdosing. Yeah, no, I don't think. Oh, you're, you're just macro. You're just, you're just a mushroom. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not tripping like, whoa, dude. Gotcha. I just do it enough where I feel like I'm uh, a little bit up, a little bit wide and creative. And then I feel like a bit of a warm, fuzzy thing if I do too much. Yeah. And one of your things in your stand-up where you say you like to do drugs in a way, what is it? Where you? I, uh, oh, what do I say? Where you? you, you oh, that's my that's my problem. Like I don't like regular high. Right. You I like, like. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> when you first said that, I was like, damn it. I kind of feel like that's always been my thing. Where yeah. I'm like, well, this feels pretty good. What if I did ten of them? And then I'm like. 
oh, no. Yeah. And then is that the last time that happens? No. Every day. And I'm like, why Every are you doing day. that again? Yeah. Therein lies, that's also, therein lies the problem. <laughs> but when you've done a lot of drugs, because I feel like uh, there was a time there where I was doing a lot where other people around me were scared for me. And and I grew out of it. I you know I fought it and and eventually kicked the narcotics, like doing heavy stuff where I could you know have a heart attack and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So to me, it was being so messed up in the first place that taking all that stuff felt good because I think the difference is kids that have a lot of issues when you take those drugs and it takes you away from you. Some people don't like that because they like you. I don't I didn't I didn't grow up liking me. So when I took those drugs and it made me go away, I was pumped. Yeah. Like it, it felt good to just not even be there anymore. Just constantly seeking validation yeah. through opioids or speed or whatever yeah. is your bag. But then when you kick it down to I do weed and mushrooms, I, I don't drink, I don't do any hard stuff. I guess if I broke my leg or whatever, I would do painkillers, but I don't. I wouldn't do them in a way w that was irresponsible. Like I wouldn't be like, "Oh man, I'm all out," and I'm asking the doctor, and he's like, "Dude, I couldn't. I just, gave you two weeks just because I love them. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't. You can't do them at all. No, man. Because you were. I was on them. Right. Like you a were decade. injecting. And, and stuff. No, I never went that far. We chasing the dragon. Yeah, I smoked yeah. it. I was mainly a pill head, but it was oxycontin, and we would smoke it and sniff it. Right. But some of my buddies, I was. I always say this analogy, like I was. Dumb enough to go in the deep end of drugs, but I held on to the side of the pool because I knew I knew it was death. You see it. I see it in my family and friends and all that jazz. And uh, and you, like, I just felt bad because my buddies would start shooting up and you just see them, you know, oh, there goes the Me too. There I feel goes, like that helped like, me. I feel but like I was like, nah, yeah. <laughs> I'm holding on. Yeah, you're right. And I pulled myself out and then did like, ghetto rehab just like alcohol and weed yeah and then i weaned i weaned off of narcotics uh with just cases of wine and ounces of weed yep and then i thought i could drink for like you know a long time and yep. and then you you got messy so many times you were like no. yeah like, i can't do shit yeah and then i was 100 percent sober until i started smoking weed halfway through the pandemic all right and then the weed came in and i've been quitting that i've did you think that you were going to use again and that's why you did the weed? Yes, so, 100%. So, so it wasn't, to keep me at bay. I have a friend that was from really darker. gone on the painkillers. like re And he was one of the greatest skateboarders that has ever lived and one of the most organized business guys. I looked up to him in every angle for that stuff and then he turned to a pile of just nothing. And I was like, out of all people, I you were the last one and now he smokes weed. I think he struggles off and on with it. But yeah. every time he does it, I don't flinch at all. I go, yeah, do, roll another one. Yeah. Smoke them all day, dude, because you're still here. Yeah. When you were doing the other stuff, you weren't here. So it's, I, is it, is it, would it be better if he didn't do anything at all? Yeah, I agree. It would, but sometimes. Yes. I completely people, agree. It's a gray area. Like everyone yeah. gets, I talk about it so much on my podcast because I try to. What's your podcast called? Community Service. All right. And that's because like, that's the whole point of me in my life to show the knuckleheads like you could get out. Yes. Hold on to this too. fucking, because yeah. no, when we're there, no one thinks we yeah. can get out. Yeah. And I don't care. I say it like if you slam heroin, then switch to dabs. Like whatever yeah. will keep you on the planet longer. Obviously, complete sobriety, I do believe is best. Yeah. But it's not always so. No cussing, no so easy, yeah. you know, and and so you just do what you got to do to survive. That's basically. I'm strong <laughs> enough now to where I'm like, okay, I don't need weed anymore. Yeah. So now I'm quitting weed. Okay. And I went like 36 days, but someone gave me OG Kush on the road, and I had a night off in between gigs, and Avatar was playing. You know, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, oh come on, man, this is my kryptonite. I I, I don't feel that's bad. <laughs> no, I, it, it's not. But what's it, bad is that I just kept going. That's what I mean. Like I don't have no fault in that, but when I, it's it's just my relationship with it. Yeah. If it's all day every day, it's like, what are you doing, dog? Yeah, I know. If it's just for Avatar, that's fine. Me too. I know. I know. When I go to skate, I try to do less before I skate, or sometimes nothing in the whole morning. And you go, I'm nice, like, dude. Right? 
let's hurry up and do this session. Look so, how sad we are. We just go, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> we're here, man. We're here. But we're here and we're doing the best we can that's with what right. we yeah. got. Hey, Avatar so got a lot up. of people. Everybody that knew us from back then, seeing us now is like, you got what a beautiful a house. Story. Look yeah. at this. That's yeah. amazing. For now. You're- <laughs> <laughs> Craig, you're a gun enthusiast as well. I love guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Are yeah. you good at it? Like, do you go to the no. range? You just I mean, actually, bunch? I'm pretty good. I'm. I've taken like two trainings, and I've been. I don't know, not a lot, but you know, more than most, maybe like 20, 30 times to yeah. the gun range, but not like I practice like all the time. No. But I'm really good shot with longer barrel uh, handguns or rifles. I grew up with BB gun and, yeah. and all that jazz. Do you ever hunt? No, uh, but I could, you know. Are you, are you a meat eater? Yeah. yeah. I fished a lot when I was a kid. My dad's a fisherman. We uh, go deep sea fishing. Okay. You hunt? Uh, I did when I was a kid, but then when I got older, I started to Buy it. feel much- bad about killing I people. Know. I don't know what happened, but I think it was, I was probably about 27. And I went back to Australia and went hunting with my brothers because that's what we did. And we would shoot rabbits. And we got up early and I capped a couple. And I got one right as he was jumping in the hole. And I reached in and pulled him out. And he was not old, he was like young. And I just, it reminded me of, I had a pug back in America. And yeah. it reminded me of my pug. And I was like, dude. It's and pretty. I remember my my ex had it on video because I was walking up the driveway, and she's filming me. And she's like, "What'd you get?" And I was like, "A rabbit." <laughs> and she was yeah. like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "I don't think I want to kill anybody anymore. It's not the same. Like when I was younger, I used to shoot wild boar and like kangaroos and everybody. I would shoot anything when I was a kid. And now, I'm like." I, I'd rather shoot a target because I, I got meat. Like, uh, Stay Classy Meat sends me uh, grass-fed meat every month. Yeah. So why are you shooting that? Why are you shooting that rabbit, you know? Let them do it. And I ate it, and it was not good, you know what I mean? And I was like, you're basically just going out there and murdering nature. And and if you want to and you go hunting deer and all that, I have not, I don't want anyone to think that I'm against it. I, I just, it's not for me. I get a little... Weird. I'm not opposed to doing it one more time. If someone was like, hey, man, we're all going, you know, we're all camping in the woods or whatever. I, yeah, I would check that out. I and could, I know that... If it was, those, I was just going to say, I could if it was like to feed my family. I like yeah, yeah. that. Like, that's yeah. different. But if I could get it at the store, I'm like, that's... I don't have to live with that on my, have you ever on seen, my heart. Have you ever seen the movie Powder? Yeah. Remember when... He the shoots guy shoots the deer, the deer and yeah. then powder touches him and touches the guy yeah. that shot him. <laughs> <laughs> that got me, man. <laughs> it, That's like it dang, powder's got a point, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That, it's this generation's it was this generation's Bambi. Yeah. <laughs> that deer was really scared, man. We could uh live I don't off want to scare the deer. I know, that's, we could live sustainably off the land and not kill, yeah. but you yeah. know, that's that's not gonna We're happen. We're killers. There's a lot of killers yeah. out there. Yeah. There's a super pig. Oh, good. I think even more super than the super pigs that have been on the loose in Texas for some time now. Incredibly intelligent, highly elusive Canadian super pigs are infiltrating Northern America. What do you mean elusive? Like they they wear camouflage? And it's because they don't have guns, and that's why the citizen needs to be armed. Canada had had no chance against them. That's Uh, right. You got super pigs. Canada Canada tried negotiating with the pigs, and look what that (laughs) got them. They threw all the loonies and (laughs) toonies. They didn't listen to the ice road truckers. (laughs) (laughs) They threw all the loonies and toonies at them, and it still didn't work. Well, they like they're they can burrow into snow and stuff. They they've got tougher living in Canada. Oh wow! Yeah. Wait, wow. they can live. They make little eagles yeah. for themselves. Yes, but highly highly intelligent. Wow. Yeah. Does that mean and they, they taste good or bad? No, they taste horrible. And they won't get their booster shot. <laughs> right. That's the worst thing about That's a smart pig, burning. man. They know. <laughs> 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 yeah. they, didn't wear, they didn't wear a mask one no, time. No, no, no. The These whole pigs pandemic. do their own research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're connected pants. to Facebook. Deep. I'm into mushrooms and truffles. Ooh. I'm voicing as the pig. Yeah, I like truffles. They're not all winners, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. <laughs> Sometimes they never are. That's that's when it's been tough. There's actually other animal news. Uh, Good, because we need more animal news. 
I don't understand this at all. They finally captured an alligator with its mouth taped shut. Yeah. They spotted it in like December. And I think what happened is somebody had tried to capture it. Like somebody had a permit got out. to remove the alligator. And so they they taped up yeah. the, the snout, but then they didn't get it and he got away. And ever since then, it's been like spotted here and there. Is he like sucking food up his ass? <laughs> right. Two questions. Has he lived? How has he lived? And how long have we are we talking mouth shut? I think at least two months. Alligators, yeah, can alligators survive anything. He's right. They're oh, not. Oh, right. Because they're the they, are they the ones that can like hibernate? Yeah. Like they can freeze they and can, just come yeah. in. Yeah. They yeah, can survive right. in water that is just staph infected water. Yeah. That it will kill any animal Dude, that can touches be it. Frozen. And, yeah. and then survive. when it thaws out, they freaking walk off. Yeah. Here's my other question. I think this bests the commercial where the guy tapes like sews the boat uh, saws the boat in half and then tapes it back together what duct tape can hold a hydroxy crocodile's seal. mouth yeah. for months in the water maybe it's hydroxy seal tape they make gorilla that. grip yeah they make that too i used to use it it's not that good but i'd probably be good <laughs> it looks like maybe it's better than i thought oh poor baby if you try to use that stuff to tape down uh, mma mats not that good but if you want to shut an alligator up bug your good. uncle very good look at that Hi-ya. So they got him and they, and they ripped it off and then they gave him some meat. Yeah, they're bringing him to some alligator. It's a she, actually. Sorry, my bad. To some alligator. Yeah, know your history. Sanctuary. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Stop, being, <laughs> stop being sexist towards crocodiles. <laughs> my bad, my bad. He, they, she's a them. Yep, no. That's a them alligator. Be. No, you it's up that. to them. Whatever they want to be, I'll respect it. See, you feel bad for the alligator, but is it wearing a mask as well, or is that just? Yeah, he he's afraid he doesn't want the booster, and so he's, he's got to wear man. the mask. He's like a luchador. <laughs> Ole, isn't it matador? The two different things. Okay, Are, what's a luchador? Is a wrestler? You sure you're it? half Mexican? Yeah. yeah, I'm whitewashed though. They beat it out of my grandpa. Isn't that how you say <laughs> it? White, whitewash. What? They're luchadors. That's the Mexican wrestlers. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, that sounds like a Mexican wrestler. I yeah. said that. Yeah, you're right. That's it what does. it is. Yeah. I was like, okay, Nacho yeah. Libre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's them. <laughs> you're on the right track now. I am, I am. That that losing, great you're movie. losing a lot of firework That's credibility. That's fine. That's fine. I got them in my car along with my pistol. What's up, fool? Yeah. You sent, you sent I got a lot. guns right now, too. We could shoot it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. What you got? I got a lot. Nice. Oh, we'll play with them after the show. Got nines and forties, and what do you got, Kitty? You got a bunch of guns too. I got guns for the kids. That's so. That's amazing. I just went to buy two more, and they wouldn't let me because I don't have my my real ID. You can't take a bootleg. Why don't you have a real ID? Because you gotta have turn in extra paperwork. I don't trust them. You know. I, are you I, trying to stay off the grid, or are you lying <laughs> and you're just lazy? I'm lazy. I right. didn't. I Wait, you don't have a. You have a driver's license. Yeah, but it has to be the real one. The DOJ just passed a new stupid law. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, I got Cap- it. Cap- yeah. Capital R. Because at one point, they, because I already had the guns, but I could no longer get the ammo with my old license. You're yes, right. Yeah. that thing. Yep. So I know it sounds like a play on words, but it's it's a no. Thing. It has a hologram. And, and you got to go to the DMV. That's hellacious. I get it. I never yeah. even saw my hologram on mine. On my, I have the real ID. Yeah. And then I was just at the airport the other day, and the guy you held get it Craig some bullets under a special. Yeah. I'll okay. hook you up. A guy, a guy under in a special light, and all of a sudden I was like Princess Leia, like help me, Obi Wan. I had yeah. no idea my ID can do that. Yeah. Oh, isn't it cool? Yeah. yeah. It is worth it. I'm gonna. To get well, a hologram. I have to now. Yeah. Otherwise, I can't no, no, buy no, the DMV. bullets. It's a big, big ass. You said you like long pistols. I'm picturing like my dad has a uh, highway stuff. patrol uh, men, the the service pistol for the CHP Glock. No, this is a revolver. Oh, okay. A uh, Smith and Weston. Oh, yeah. oh, old school. Like I don't know, five inch barrel. It's pretty, but I'm accurate as shit with that bad boy. Yeah, that's what I have. Oh yeah. my god, eight I love round it. revolver. Yeah, but my it's Glock, a lot of cool my ones. Glock, not so much. What's I'm another okay. one you got, Katie? The 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 German looking one. Um, I don't think that's mine. I think that might be Tiger's Ruger. Right. Yeah, we got a Ruger too. Yeah. Ruger. I just bought a 22. Ruger ten twenty two. Yeah. Low. Let's. We should go shoot. For, we should. Like a legal place. There's not that many <laughs> guns. You should get. <laughs> you should get some legal identification. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We should go to the DMV. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that the worst thing? No, there's not that many in uh, Southern California. You know. Shooting ranges? No, I mean gun people. 
Oh, they're there. They're, they're there. They're, there. they're yeah. just, we're in, we're in hiding. Yeah. We're in secret. I don't know why everyone we're not has popular. to be at war with each other with that yeah. stuff. All the gun people are all angry at all the libtards. And I'm like, I'm pretty much a libtard. And I'm like, with, I, I, with like, a, I like guns. With a gun. Yeah. The difference is if everyone's <laughs> like, hey, man, we want your machine gun back. I'd be like, okay. Because in Australia, they did that. And we just said, okay. And I hear I it seems to make a lot of Americans angry when you when you because that's what I when I go to the dry shooting range, I will hear freaking burr, 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 they're trying to take all and I'm like oh oh no but we're at a shooting range right now and I have like a I have like an assault rifle <laughs> it doesn't seem that bad but okay it's terrible I guess <laughs> yeah I just think it ex the Second Amendment exists for a reason. And the reason why there's freedom of speech and freedom of guns were one and two is because one protects the other. But that's just me. Yep. Well, but, you're an uh, American. Yeah. But you, you, under, you I, look I, at I just, an American once told me, you don't get it. You're Australian. And I remember thinking, shut up, idiot. But he might be right. <laughs> Because I don't get it. You I could look at all the countries where there was the most extreme lockdowns. The population doesn't have pistols. See, know? that's ridiculous. And Sorry, but that's ridiculous. Is it? Yeah. Why? Nobody nobody shot anybody here to not put the mask on. That's what I mean. But it, but if you look at the 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 same amount of, of people it, put it on. If you want to put it on because you thought you were helping other people. No, live. I mean extreme lockdowns, like in your country. I believe it was oh, in Australia, Sydney yeah. or Melbourne. Where in those Melbourne, my brother called me at one point, and sh they sent me a video of them. They a friend had a mini ramp in a little warehouse, and they would secretly meet to skate the mini ramp, and if they had it got caught, they would have been in really big trouble. And I, and What I I'm saying is that's not happening in Texas. That's what I'm saying. Do you catch my drift? Yeah, it didn't. Because you're saying people wouldn't have stood for it. people have and, guns and, and, and the anger and then be like, back up. Yeah, that's a theory that's out there. I mean, I think the Third Amendment is next to the Second Amendment for a reason too, uh -oh. which is that there was like the Revolutionary War and stuff was going on at that very same time. Like yeah. arming the population, like what is it? No soldier should be quarantined in any house without the consent of the owner. That yeah. sounds like a pretty like of the moment kind of thing. Yeah. So if you're going to say it's next to the first for it, a reason, you could say it's next to the third for a reason too. I didn't press And then I also said bad? there should be a revolutionary. What Tom and Jefferson say? What did he say? There should be a revolution every six months to keep the people honest? Dang. He said something that like that. Like you could lot. Google I mean, that. a war would it's just make corruption. it better. I saw Tim Dillon say the other day that we need a war. <laughs> there is one, baby. Yeah, he had a good, it was a good it's argument. over there, though. It's no, better. here. Oh, yeah. He thinks we should all be nuked, and that then we would be better. We would toughen up. You know what, though? And we would not bitch about the little things anymore. It's the same thing that's going on in my, like, apartment complex. <laughs> hey, wait, real quick, if Katie, I didn't press record. Is that bad? I'm going to beat you later. Ooh. I'm going to not press record all the time. Yeah, Go that's, ahead, a, that's a pistol whipping. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we haven't even been rolling. <laughs> oh, we're rolling, but there's a, ba a secondary. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we need you to get back out on the grass. <laughs> I'll be right over. there. I have video of this maniac out here, out there doing it. Here's the thing. With the HOA, everybody wants us to change our policies and we got to repaint the building and all that, but it's annoying to do it. It's like a five-hour-a-week job to actually run the thing and nobody wants to give up those five hours a week. So we just have a slack where we all just go, man, everything's got to change around here. Yeah, we can all agree on that. But it's like, okay, who wants to run to run our HOA? It's like, I'm sorry, I'm really busy. Everybody wants the war. Nobody wants the, the war. war. Yeah, I really like kittens, though. So. I just think there's a war on everything right now. And if we yeah. woke up, we realized we could live off the land and take care of each other. And protect ourselves with our pistols. A lot <laughs> no. of people would die. Uh, you but, sounded like a former Trader Joe's employee, right? I am. Right up until that last. Yeah, he really is. I know. Um, and <laughs> that's just the truth. I mean, there's abundance in nature. There's abundance everywhere. It's just yeah. people don't want you to believe that. They're just like, you gotta depend. Is on there us. really abundance? For sure. Like if you just go, if out you into looked the woods, up how you much can... food was spoiled each year just because it's not pretty enough. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about. Is it easy to live in the woods? Because I would think it would be hard. I don't know about that. I'm just saying if everyone grew their own food and shared and helped each other, then... Oh, right. Like then why, you're asking people to share and help each other. It's, you not it sounds that, crazy, no, it's but it's possible. Even without that, if, if just everything that we grew actually got harvested, actually got used, didn't get turned around and fed to animals, which wastes a lot of the energy in the process, or, nobody would be hungry if we all ate wheat sandwiches for lunch every day. 
What's a wheat sandwich? I don't know. It would be terrible, but uh, it would be food. Uh, okay. If we all just this lived guy's on just combative. What what if every where do you, what if every city tree was planted was an apple tree? Then you could feed the homeless. I have no, I would Why are they all Can pumped? you live off apples? You know what I mean? No, but you I'm just saying we could change for the better mm-hmm. and make it way better just by simple solutions like that. Yeah. Why are we subsidizing war? Why are we subsidizing uh, corn, making high fructose corn syrup? Because really rich people- Why are we people, subsidizing big pharma? Because really why, rich people are doing what suits them. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. Why are we subsidizing all this shit that does nothing for us? Because rich people want more money. I'm just saying we could subsidize that is beneficial to humanity. And, and it would be a different I mean, what story. about fast food? What about food in general? <laughs> like, if you go to the supermarket, yeah. what it's if kind we of made, the same quality as fast food. What if food we now? made cancerous, carcinogenic chemicals yeah. illegal? You're yeah. probably yeah. what if to we it? did that? It's weird that it's not right. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's illegal in the European Union and Canada, but over here you could put yeah. yoga mat chemical in your Subway sandwich. Yeah. Namaste. Yeah. <laughs> what if we did that? Yeah. You yeah. know, There's a lot of things we could do. There's so much we could do to make. What if we stopped killing the water car inventors? What if we did that? Yeah. Wait, that was a thing, right? A guy I mean, there's only that. three that died, but did that's you fight a lot? crazy. No, but I'm feisty as fuck. I get knocked out a lot. Because uh, we got, I got heckled at the show, <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't say, I just said to the little guy, like, hey, man, keep it down. And then his buddy, bigger guy, was looking at me like he wanted to go, and I was like, Wow. Like, if you stand up, I'm kicking you in the face, but I'm not trying to do that. And I'm also new and I was trying to be, I didn't, I, it's my first time I ever had a heckler. And I was like, I don't know what to do. I think I made a little joke about him and I didn't really pay much more attention to it. I moved on. And then he's after me and those dudes started <laughs> doing the same thing to him. And he snapped and I'll checked them kill you. hard, like really hard to the point where I got up. I was with my other friend who's a pro fighter and we were like, nope, there ain't no security in here, dude. If they go, we got to go down there and help him. And we were like, I was standing up because I thought there's no way this is going to resolve. And, and, and he, you said some stuff that he he backed off. Like I he slapped stood there. his leg. I told him to shut up and yeah. get the f*** out. I'll yeah. give you one more chance. Yeah. And then he popped off and I was like, get the f*** out. Yeah. And then you said something about what my somewhere uh, my upbringing. I'm ready to go. I don't care. Yeah. And it, and it, yeah. and it put him in check. Yeah. And he was he just sort of walked out. He left. Like it wasn't even security to escort him. It was another friend of the person that ran the, the yeah. night. That, and then I had to do 30 minutes. And then after he went that. straight into that. Yeah. <laughs> I it was once again very impressive. I don't like disrespect when it's like I know I've been knocked out and I have apologized. Be like, I am sorry. I made you knock me out. Wait, you woke up and apologized because you yeah, were being super I, annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I, I don't like they were wrong. I like justice. That's why I speak the way yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah. And, and just like, why can't everyone just be civil? Yeah. Like I like it when motherfuckers get knocked out if they have it coming. You okay. know, yeah. I'm not a fighter, but I'm feisty, so yeah. I won't back down. And they knew that, and yep. that's all it takes. It sometimes. is most of the time because I might lose, but I'm gonna bite your throat in the if process. If you're prepared to die, it's it's yeah. You, the other person doesn't matter how tough you are. You know, I, like, I know how to fight, and I've had people look at me in a way where I'm like, you're like you're like, you're like 160 pounds. <laughs> you look real confident, <laughs> and it is, and it is. I'm like, I am now second guessing because I'm like, why are you? Why do you think this is going to work out for you? You got something? Like you got a gun on you? Because that's usually yeah, yeah, yeah. something. Like why yeah. are you so cocky when you know I'll kill you? Can you yeah. throw a punch, Craig? Oh, no. Not I mean, at all. Would you I like mean, to not prove it? We have yeah, we have a punch pad. Oh, no, I'm good, yeah. You sure? You yeah. want to rip one? What do you mean? Fart? <laughs> no, rip a punch. <laughs> Tough talk. Into the pound for pound measuring device. Oh, no. Then you can know how strong you are. I'm, I'm good, dog. You sure you don't want to know how strong you are? Yeah. Okay. That's why I have guns and knives. I'm not strong. That's a good point. <laughs> what, you what about armor? Have you ever, do you invest in armor? Like, do you have a, uh, a bulletproof no. vest? I, I talk all this gun talk. I just want the basics. Like, I want the, the collection, just one of each. Yeah. So you're more about look at all my guns. For you, not for other people. You're like, look at all these yeah. cool guns. And you like hold them. Do you clean them a lot? No. Do you, have you cleaned them at all? Once. <laughs> it's ha- not easy. No, it's not. Pulling it's it all apart really is hard. a nightmare, yeah. I had to do it with my buddy too. Yeah. No, I'm a newbie. I, yeah. And I just like, I just love them 
because I'm a kid that grew up in the 90s and I watched every damn John claude Van Damme movie. Yeah. And I like him for that reason. I also like that it's just like, it's just a symbol. Like, don't f*** with me. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, I don't like violence and harm to humanity. That's a confusing That's sentence. A confu- you can like uh, guns and thing. not want to harm anyone. Like, I don't understand. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I don't want to harm anybody. Yeah. And I have guns. I don't, I don't know. I want to take more training courses and go shooting with a you buddy. You should because there's a lot. I noticed when I did like tactical training and stuff, it made shooting way more fun. Yeah. Like when there's a lot more that you have to think about besides just shooting the target, it made it a thing where I was like, oh, you could like, uh, you could do this enough to where you get clearly way better than you did the day you showed up. Like it's a it's a thing. Yeah, I'm a newbie. I just like 22s. I don't even like the big Aww. recoil. Yeah. I do. My dad has a little 22 revolver. It's so yeah, cute. Those are little, cool. Little cowboy. My son cat has gun. a 22 semi-automatic. Yeah, and it's badass. It's I love that gun. Awesome. It's yeah. just, and it is that like plinking is fun. The the few times I've been shooting the little metal target, yeah. it's so fun. Ding. Yeah, and then they Ding. have they have like ones. What's the place? Is it Row Hoggies? Row Hoggies, yeah. And they have like an outdoor place, and they have like a, they set up stuff where there's all kinds of little things, and you hit them, and they, it tips over, and it goes bing, so you can be like bing, 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 and then you know there's it's like fire head, you know, it's like everything. So it's like the thing at Disneyland, but with real guns. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but way better targets than the yeah. game. Yeah. Like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. rows of little ones in the back, so it's like when you knock out the easy ones and you go for the the long distance little shot. They should have a guy in a bulletproof golf cart <laughs> that drives around because that's the, that's the wow, best. That is badass. That's the best that part. Is of, dangerous. That's the best yeah. part of the then driving range. Then there's that one pick. That could you, know, be for, you know when you go hit golf balls and the guys to go out to pick them up and yeah. everybody just blatantly. This, this could be what you're talking about, Michael. I've never tried to do that. <laughs> everybody does. Yeah. That would be a solution for people with severe depression. Be like, you want to kill yourself? Go have this job for a week. We'll see if you want to live. You know Ooh. what I mean? Because then all of a sudden they got bullets hitting them. They're like, I want to live. Right. I didn't right. mean it. Yeah. That's too dark. Can no. Scared, we can no put scared, cutscene. Can you give scared straight kids that job? Wait, I, re- I remember full circle why I snapped on those dudes and why I was willing to get knocked out and go and throw. Because the only thing that ever made me change and wake up from being a shithead just like them, because I was that guy. Maybe yeah. that's why it was such like, oh, because it's triggering. I was like, I was that piece of shit. I was the heckler. I was the guy that deserved to get kicked out. Is the only thing that ever made me change was people calling me out on my bull. It made me think, because you were asking me questions, like, why the fuck am I so ready to go with people? Not anybody, anytime. Are you crazy? I'm a civil, peaceful guy, but those Those people- Those guys completely out of line, and it wasn't, nobody in the crowd was like, whoa, Craig. Like, everyone was like- Everyone was on my side. Somebody had to get these guys out. Yep. It just took the 155-pound Twinkie guy. Yeah. (laughs) Instead of me, which was- Instead of the giant muscle man that does MMA with tats on his face. You handled it really well. (laughs) I I blame you. You. Should've. I told Brianna. I was like, I pivoted. I had my foot ready, and I was um, like, if he gets up, because he looked like he wanted to fight us. Like he had that face where he looked like he was ready to throw a punch. And I don't want to do that. That took uh, a lot. That took them heckling every single comic on the show, which did. are my three friends. They heckled Ian. They heckled Jesus. They heckled you. Yep. They heckled you. I don't know why I said it that way. And then they heckled me. And it was just like, is nobody doing? Here, yep. I have to do thirty minutes. I yep. can't do it with these dumb fucks. Right, good point. Six inches away from me, they're front row. Yeah, by the that way. was the other. It was part. literally like, like seriously. It was right like here. when they yelled, the mic picked it up. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it bad. was not good. Speaking of comedians getting knocked out on stage, R.I.P. <laughs> Richard Belzer. Yes, and this, you know who Richard Belzer is? Mm-hmm. Right, one He's of the legend. greats. Yeah, absolutely. He got knocked out. Dude, I wasn't a aware long of that. Time ago, he was one of those guys that was like wrestling's fake. Blah 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 blah. And him and Hulk Hogan were on a TV show where he was talking smack about how wrestling's fake. And Hulk Hogan, he let Belzer put his head in here, in the arm. 20 inch pythons. And then and then the 20 inch python choked him unconscious. So then it's like a 10 seconds of still choking him while he's out. Then he just lets him go and he flops from standing to hit his head on the ground. These are the things that when you do it to certain people, they die. Like, not everybody, but a lot of humans out there, when you do that, they can die from that head injury. Yeah. 
And he did it like, Bleh, what? And then when Belzer woke up, he was like, you know, suing the guy. And I feel like TV, movie, Hollywood, you're like, ah, you know, Belzer got choked out, whatever. And as a guy that has had fight, choke, being choked unconscious, letting go of somebody from standing when they're choked unconscious, you know that they're going to hit their head really hard because it's the momentum thing. Yeah. The body falls and then the head is the last thing. And that's like a, you've already choked him out and now you're giving him a concussion because he's a comedian, a professional comedian that was calling you out. It doesn't it, make it his did, head thicker. It was, a, it was a really, I felt like Hulk Hogan was very lucky that Richard Belzer didn't wake up with permanent injuries. I, I don't know because it was such a long time ago, but I think he was like pretty hurt yeah, for a I while. Not yeah, he, well, first of, of all, check, check out the, here's the clip. from it some, is it's, brutal. It's like a talk show from like 85 or so that Belzer was hosting. Oh, boy. And he woke up. And, and he's there He's there with Mr. T, and they're actually promoting the inaugural WrestleMania, or the or the big first. So Hulk was fired up. Yes. He was trying to prove a point. Yeah. And this was a, a very dangerous way to prove a point. Yeah. And Richard Belzer could be. Are we fairly not playing it? It's, it, like, stopped playing. I'm going to try it again. Here we go. So no. that is a... Great. Oh, it stopped. <laughs> I have been choked out a couple of times by buddies. For when, fun? When I was out of line. Right. Like, oh, no, they were. Because they all do jujitsu. And, yeah. and I'm like, and I would be like. <laughs> I've had to do that to a drunk person on an island. He was going to kill everybody and everybody on the island. I wasn't going to, to kill everybody. but uh, Well, I, I just remember that choking him out, it was so wasted that he didn't know that he was unconscious when he woke up. So then I had to do it again where he didn't <laughs> go out. He just felt the fear of going. And then he sobered up and was like, all right, I'll stop. So Belzer, in this case, I think his head split open. And, yeah, no doubt. And he needed some some stitches. And to add literal insult to injury, Hulk Hogan, like, uh, throws it to Mr. T. And I, Mr. T, you know, she's like, this is what, what you get. Yeah. We'll oh, play it. Don't, we'll, don't worry. You have be, to take our word for us. Okay. People that are listening, they're going to see it. Right. We'll, we'll play it. Oh, so I, the I, aftermath of that, I'd forgotten he, When he this. wakes up, he gets up and starts... Like immediately uh, saying, like a, he's still being a show host. Like we'll be back. Aren't comedians amazing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His head split. He's bleeding, but he's like, gotta the show must go yeah. on, right? Because he's right. Because he's a proper comedian. Chris that's- Rock got smacked, and he kept up the bits. I know, crazy, right? That's you know. I mean, because he's a professional. What's yeah. he supposed to do? Yeah. Imagine if they scrapped. Yeah. Like instead of going back to your script, you just started throwing down with Will Smith. <laughs> I don't think anybody in the crowd is going up to help. Oh, so no, no, no. That's just going like, to be this awkward, protracted security. Well, because everyone's yeah. going to think it's a bit. They'd be like, this is so no, weird. No, that. Nah, that slap was immediate. Did yeah. you think that maybe this was a bit? No, I when thought it was slap? real. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So I felt like if they had started throwing, nobody in the crowd is going to help them. We, we know that. So security has to be informed to go out there and do it. It was so also prob- weird. We're like, would've... what is this? What? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it made oh. little to no sense. He really lost it for a second. Richard Belzer sued over that. He sued for $5 million. Good, he almost died. Fair. There was a suit. And uh, they settled out of court. And I think people think the estimate is as low as 400000 that he got. It may have been more than that. And he took the money and him and his wife bought like a, a house in the French countryside. And yeah. they like joked. They, they had actually called it, you know, like sometimes a fancy place would be like the Bennington Arms. Yeah, okay. They called it the, the Hulk Hogan Arms. That's so funny. And yeah. he was married to this, I forgot all about this, until for most of his adult life, he, 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 she, she's recently widowed, this woman, Harley McBride, who was one of the most talented uh, hard R movie actresses of her time. Wait, she was... Dude, she's special a, needs? B- no, hard R, like not quite X rated. She used to star in Playboy movies oh, where they like. Okay. I, oh. I, I, I took it that way too. We both thought you called like, it her. autism. What yeah. she got? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you and I are like, that's impressive to make it that far being mentally no, challenged. After like this, that. yeah, he married this super hot special <laughs> needs chick. <laughs> I thought the same thing. Bell, Bell's just I'm like, like, wow. I don't know if that's appropriate, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was the 80s, you know. Yeah, yeah. They both had head injuries, you know. <laughs> That's too dark. He Man, wakes he up down. and starts talking, to saying he's going to commercial break. That is insane. Yeah. I've been choked out on the radio before by Matt Hughes. 
on this dude's radio show. I remember show. him, rear naked choke guy, kept getting choked out. Dude, right? he choked me and like in a really mean way. Like he choked me and then when I went out, he let go of me. So I hit my head on the ground, but it was carpet. But that was, it was a weird, he, you know, he, he yeah. didn't know me and he was like, F you, dude, I'm going to. I'm going to make this as brutal as, because I trained enough to know that when he started, it wasn't a blood choke. It was, he was trying to crush my windpipe. Like he just went straight at it from the back. And I remember I was like, well, that was a little un, unnecessary. Yeah. And then whoa, I go out. But I woke up and thought that I, because I got knocked out in Australia real bad. I was like in and out of consciousness. I peed my pants. Like I had to go to the hospital in an ambulance. So when I got choked out, I woke up thinking that I was back in that. So when I woke up, I was like, where's the ramp? Damn. And I'm like, why is Matt Hughes laughing at me? And Damn. Yeah. That's fucked up. And then I had to continue doing, because I was a guest on their show, and I was like, yeah, hardy ha. And I remember several times through that interview going, are you here? Like, what is, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm here. Is everything okay? Because... That that one where I hit in Australia. You should have sued him too. He should have bought this goddamn house. Yeah. yeah. I normally hate the lawsuits, but you split my head open. That's fair game. Yeah, that, the, that was like, ridiculous. This is crazy. But yeah. Wrestlers so, back then had to prove a point, Michael. It's not fake. It, yeah, exactly. And it and and in Hulk Hogan's defense, it never actually was. Wrestling has always been totally real. Those guys actually beat the crap out of each other every single night. It's true. Not scripted whatsoever. That's the craziest thing, is Belzer was accusing him of something that he knew darn well was completely true. I love how everything is so, like, wrestling clearly is fake. Yeah. But clearly, it's also real in the sense they get injured, they die, yeah. Yeah. they get hurt. Right. And but everyone, think, it's like a war. It's like, no, it's right in between. I think we didn't like, have the mental capacity to understand that back in the 80s. Yeah. I think that the, the, the world has... Whether you like it or not, there's a lot, obviously a lot of extremely stupid people out there now, more dumber than ever before, but there's also a lot of people that have gathered a lot of information. They're like, oh, so you're saying uh, that it's, because we all knew it was fake. Well, that's, come on. It's, nobody, the, it's nobody theater knows, with blood. Nobody thinks it's real. <laughs> but it, but does yeah. it hurt and is it a grind and does it take an, uh, an athlete with a lot of will to continue? Yes. So there's this weird thing where you're calling them fake and it's hurting them then their ego because it is a little scripted. But in their defense, it's like, yeah, man, I guess it kind of is, but it's actually real and there's a lot of pain and you could not be a, you would not be able to do what I do. It takes extreme athleticism to do it. Right. These and guys it would, are crazy. It'd be hard not to choke an asshole out every now and then is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. When yeah. you're like, blah, 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 it's all fake. And, you know, Bells is like, you know, 160 pound rail thin, never did a sport you're in right. his life. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I see it both angles. I mean, rest in peace. I mean, you know what I mean. Yes. They'd been beating up guys who looked like Belzer since junior high. <laughs> yeah. This was yeah. nothing new for Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Peace. Yeah, there's a documentary out right now about uh, WrestleMania and how big of a deal and, you know, people's parts in it that made wrestling put it on the map, you know, like, and it was, it was real showtime. So I feel like Hulk, from this little bit that I saw, he was aware that what he does right now can make him like a, a oh, legend yeah. forever it's for and he can f make his sport be a bigger thing so he really was i think in a mindset where dude don't nobody's if you're near me and you call me fake i am i'm wrecking you dude how bad is it that we just saw through like that was a pr stunt it took this poor guy being choked out and his head split open but it was like a million dollar publicity stunt is what it was he's like i'll take the hit how Vince big was mcmahon it? probably paid him off Just how like, big hey. was it when it happened i don't recall Me hearing either. about it at all I and i was either. following hulk hogan pretty closely it's kind of like a live tv show you tried to murder a guy a little bit i don't even the name of the show was like night moves or like, bowser goes wild yeah i don't <laughs> believe Bilzer it after dark yeah, blame I'm, it on bowser I'm a comedian, came up in the, not with comedy, but grew up in the 80s and 90s loving Hulk and remember Hulk and Devo, the yeah. Z and the movies. And I don't remember that Wait, at Devo? all. Wait, Devo? What did Devo from uh, oh, Devo. Friday. 
Not Devo, oh. the band. Debo. I thought he was like Whip It. <laughs> no, <I'm saying>. Debo. <laughs> he would have beat the crap out of those Debo guys. Zeus. He Who's was Zeus. Debo. He, uh, Debo. What's his Tiny name? Tiny Lister. Uh, yes, Tiny Lister is a big dude, and he was uh, Zeus in the movie that was Hulk versus Zeus. The movie. And yeah. he was the character Debo in Friday. Right. The and bike guy. Yeah. The, yeah. He died too. Yeah. Too much fried food and pork. Like, we got to eat fruits and vegetables. I remember seeing him because he was sponsored by Monster, and I have friends that run some of that, and he walked terribly. Yeah. And it was 2002, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, wow. Like, what's what's up with that? Big guys, that happens sometimes. He, I think he was probably a pro football player or something, or at yeah. least he, he did a lot of activity in his youth. I don't know. I just follow a lot of hip-hop podcasts, and... um. Felicia, by Felicia from the Friday movie. Yeah. She says how she met him towards the end and was trying to cure him through fruits and veggies. Oh, because it really was his diet. That's what she said on oh, a podcast. Oh, wow. He was just eating really bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, just in that I wasn't there, but just old school dudes in their old school ways. Like my yeah. dad's one, and I'm like, Dad, you got to stop eating Hungry Jack. Tony Hawk. His father, who's a great man, helps skateboarding and all that stuff, and he ate steaks. That's it. That's what he eats. And he ended up, you know, the doctor, he's having heart problems, and they're like, you have to change your diet. And he sat down, the whole family, and said, if I have to live on fruits and vegetables, I'd rather die. So I'm going to eat crazy. steak. It's crazy. That's what I mean. That old school, yeah. my Nana was the same way. Like, Refused you can't drink. Do. They're like, I'd rather die. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're not like, joking. all right. And no, yeah. she's not. She's, she's stuck like, to it. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. And we're let, like, let me, let me from Motorhead and your grandma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, if that's just, the way you want to go and that makes you happy, then great. I just think it's balance. It's like, eat your steak, but how about some fruits and veggies too? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that is, but. It's so like, Finally. Some people really don't enjoy vegetables. That's like crazy. we had a guy that used to work on the show that he wasn't joking. He could his mouth, it was kind of like you ever do a lot, a lot of coke and then you're like, maybe I should eat something, then you go to buy it, like a sandwich or like a cookie or something, you're like, I literally can't swallow it. <laughs> is that my tongue? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> is this a cookie or my he looked, mouth? He looked like that when he was eating like a, a cucumber. He was just like his mouth was like, this is not going to go down. I remember looking at him like, you're not joking. Vegetables are really bad to you. Like real bad. Yeah. Surprised me. It's crazy. But they're out there. They are. They're the old school shit, man. They're just Hey, like baby, meet it up. If that's your thing, meet it up. I'll see you in the, uh, in the spirit world. Yeah. I'll see you in the barbecue section of hell. Yeah. Which doesn't <laughs> sound that bad. <laughs> I don't yeah. think hell has a barbecue section, but if it did have a barbecue hell section, is the barbecue section. That would be yeah, the spot. Like, it's just all all of us. Does right. everybody does everybody get a burger or do they get like a, a like a barbed wire sandwich? No, and they're you like, are, oh, you man. are the burger. I think you just chew on your arm. Right. Oh <laughs> uh, no. I'm going to heaven now. I give up hell. I don't know, Time man. I changed. feel like hell's yes. not that bad. I feel like hell could just be like you know, your in-law's house forever or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I the whole burning, a... constantly burning. It's like, dude, if I burn and I don't die, eventually it will not, it would just be, yeah, I'll go to sleep while burning. I'll I... wake up and I'm like, yeah, I'm burning. Let's go get a sandwich. I could barbecue anything I want with my own hand. I could pick up a steak and be like, <laughs> shh. Then I get a cheeseburger. Toast, toast the bread. <laughs> yeah. I toast it just by touching it. And boom, I'm eating. <laughs> Buy me a cheeseburger yeah. today. And eating I'll pay cheeseburgers you in hell with a big flaming smile on my face. I think hell is made up by the church just so you get scared and give them your money. So they can wow, where'd you? That's a ridiculous <laughs> theory. There's no give way. Me that's true. Yeah. Give me money. Give me money. I wish people were watching me all the time. What do you mean? Just like a, you know, mean like a mythical guy watching me. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, right. But right. Look at this. You know? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Man, you really going to take a doogie right now? I'm like, yep, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Leave me alone. You really going to come on that person? Yep. Yeah. I'm laying in the soil. You're messing with my flow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I live my life like God is watching. 
And I think that God would be down. Check yeah. this out. In my mind, Jesus, <laughs> is, Jesus is the ultimate voyeur. I think they made up like a ma- a, an anal Jesus. You know what I mean? Like he's like, do not and thou shall. But I think Jesus, I really think that the person that made the universe, if he's a mythical creature that lives in the sky and he's watching us at all times, I think every now and then he looks and he goes, good for you, Jace. I mean, why else would he put the G spot in there, huh? That's what's up? God I'm, put a thing in your butt, and if you touch it, bing. God said, go finger your asshole yeah. real quick. Tickle, yeah. tickle, tickle, tickle. I think he looks down at me sometimes, and he goes, he gets it. Right. <laughs> that guy gets that it. That guy gets it. He's yeah. coming out of both sides. Yeah. Look at him go. You're yeah. getting Look at him go. You're getting anally penetrated when you get up here as much as you want, champ. That's the 11th commandment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be all right with you. It's we'll all, be mates. It's all love. Yeah. Well, it's been a great show. Craig, yeah. I, I, I appreciate your radical pro-gun vegan agenda. <laughs> that's, that's Wait, well, he's not a vegan. No, I ain't me. Yeah. He, he just you're, pro ve- you're, pro, you're pro-vegetable. I am pro-vegetable. He enjoys vegetables. I enjoy You're vegetables. pro-apple. We all should, everybody. You can be both. Yes. Remember okay. to do all say, also stay hydrated and eat vegetables. And the, the, who knows? The sky's the limit. Yeah. Right, Craig? Yes. There it is. Yes. Where do we follow Craig and how do we get a hold of Craig when he's doing tour dates and all that stuff? At Craig P. Conant on all social media platforms and CraigConant.com. There it is. Coming to a city near you. I'll be blowing right now. Come get these jokes. He's very funny. And the Community Service Podcast. And my podcast. That's right. Thank you, sir. Community Service Podcast. Thank you for having me, bro. Thanks for being on, dude. dude. I'm pumped. Yeah, stoked. See you next week, everybody. Take care of each other. 